talking about this book. It's so interesting, the facts I've learned, you know, from of Buffalo music history. It's just, just amazing so many things that started here that I think so many people aren't aware of, including myself. <laughs> That's why I wrote the book. <laughs> no, tr truthfully, the reason I wrote the book is because there was never anything written like this. You know, there's been books written about Buffalo music, sure, but just like one genre of music. There wasn't anything that was written that covered everything, all styles of music, all types of entertainment. How the radio station started, how the television station started, where right. were all the music Right, parties? and you have all you that know. here. I mean, it started out with Canal Street and just grew from there. It's just an amazing history that I think people have forgotten about. Well, people know about it. Isn't that they haven't forgotten? There's people that have made their entire lifetime in music, and they weren't aware of the origins of some of the stuff in music. Like you said, uh, Canal Street. Canal Street was like one of the most dangerous places in the world. You know, this is where all the people that worked on the Erie Canal barges came. Right. And all the guys that worked on Because that's the, what drew everybody here originally. Yeah. And so everybody came, all the sailors went to these bars, right? Right. So what do sailors do when they go to bars? They're, they're they want looking, wine, women, and song. They want wine, women, and song. That's, that's what you had in Canal Street. Right. You know, but in decadent areas, what happens? New things get developed. Look at Bourbon Street, New Orleans. Right. You know, jazz started. Right. You know, would it have... You know, started if it wasn't such a seedy area or something right. like that. You and I was know. amazed to hear some of the people that came from here that were involved in different things, like the person that wrote the song for The Wizard of Oz. You know, Buffalo Bill from Howdy Doody mm -hmm. was, was from here. I, I, I didn't originally know that. I was watching Howdy Doody show back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But so many other things, you know. And then it grew into the theaters here mm -hmm. with, with Michael Shea's theaters and other theater chains, mm -hmm. you know. And we had the Pan American Exposition here. There's, mm -hmm. there's just so much rich history of things that started here. And, and you've got so much of that covered here which is so great, you know, this great history of Buffalo music and entertainment. It's just an amazing book. You know, I've only scratched the surface of, of what's happening in here that's, that's been going on. Um, tell us a little bit about the Buffalo Sound and how that kind of came well, to be. The Buffalo Sound is really what was Buffalo. You know, I always say when it comes to music, Buffalo was not a segregated city. Musicians, black, white, everybody got together and did things together. So all the white guys would go learn from what all the black R&B players and the blues players were doing. Right. You heard about the Chitlin circuits. Right. You know, that was really big in Buffalo. We used to be able to go to all the bars and see that. So you just got this sound out of Buffalo, which had like a, a deep bass. You know, the big Hammond organ sound behind it. Most of the time, like a sax inside of it. And when you heard that, you said, that's Buffalo. You know, and a bunch of bands from that time period. In fact, when I covered the 1960s in my book, I said there were two different types of bands during the 60s. There were the Buffalo Sound Bands, and there were the Teen Club Bands. The Buffalo Sound Bands were more, you know, R&B, blues oriented. Right, and the you Teen know, Clubs were the, huge. There was such well, a teen audience back then. Why? Because us baby boomers were, we ruled. Right, You know, there, right. was, there were so many of us. Right. Look at the population of Buffalo. Back when I was a kid, Population of Buffalo was over a half a million people. And there's probably teen dance clubs and nightclubs clubs all over the place, every right? Place, every place you could play. If you wanted to be a musician, there were so many places you could work, it was amazing. I feel sorry for the kids today coming up in music. Right. So few it's definitely tougher. There are more places opening all the time. There's different things coming up. I mean, like, like School of Rock yeah, that so we're sitting at here today yep. is okay. another great thing. But the one thing I don't like is you take school dances now. They don't have rock bands play at school dances. No. The kids don't have the opportunity to do that. What do they want? They want disc jockeys. Right. Okay. And there's a totally different mindset. We all wanted to have musicians. So everybody was a musician. I started playing full time when I was in eighth grade. Right. Because my family was in music. So I was like, right after the Beatles came out, I was playing. Right. And I've talked to a lot of local bands, and they say they were gigging like, you know, five, six nights a week, mm -hmm. you know, until like the big age change came about. Right. And they raised the drinking age, and that kind of like put a kibosh on a uh, lot that, of stuff for a while. There was a portion while. of it. There, was, there were other factors involved in what ended up making Buffalo go down. You know, the age change was one of them. You think about it, when I said I started playing, I started playing the bars when I was like 13 years old. Why? I've always been six foot one. You know? Right. And, you know, so I play low keyed and be in the background and you know nobody would question anything. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the early radio and T V here. A lot of a lot of things started here and there's a lot of channels still going, original channels from from back in the day. But uh, radio had a big footing here for sure. That was the first thing that started. Well 
the first thing that started, but it was also one specific DJ that did a lot of that. And there was a guy by the name of Hound Dog Lorenz. You know, the Hound started out like a country station up in the falls. Okay. But what he would do is he would play the original rock and roll songs by the black artists. Like it's called Buffalo Sound. Right. And okay. nobody was doing that. Yet. Nobody was doing that. They played all the watered down things by right. like Perry Como or Paul Inca or, you know, something. Right. He was small. So you know, he was a breakout person he doing was a this. Breakout. And he would also talk about the musicians and what they were like. Right. Well, he ended up leaving here and he went to Cleveland. Well, when he got to Cleveland, there was somebody else there doing an early rock and roll named Alan Freed. Right. Okay, so you had Alan Freed and you had uh, Hound Dog Lorenz, both of them in Cleveland. So when they looked for a place for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Buffalo right. was in consideration. Who won? Right. Cleveland. Well, well, they said that Alan Freed said rock and roll first in Cleveland. So that's why it's there. That's well, what that's what they say. Or did George Lorenz say it first? Well, uh, yeah. the, the public <laughs> thing say this. So that's why that's why it's in Cleveland. If you folks didn't know that, that's, <laughs> that's why that's there. But as things change, as we got into TV then, all those radio stations melded into different TV stations in the area, and they started basically, out, basically. right? But still, there was the rock and roll radio station, WBNY, not one from uh, Buff State. There was a radio station, WBNY, was the first full-time radio station. That's where Danny Nervous was first on. Right. And then they came up with the idea of, let's do WKBW radio. And the Hound went over to KB, and, but then they said, we're going to become a total rock and roll station, because the Hound show is just one of several. There was no united format. BNY was the first. But KB Radio was the first format for all rock and roll music. And they got Joey Reynolds. They got uh, Tommy Shannon. They got Danny Everett. Right. KB Radio was so powerful. They had 50,000 watts. Yeah, you, they, were, they were bringing the shows here. They oh bought yeah. the Rolling Stones here back right. in the day. Well, even more so, something that happened is KB being 50,000 watts, you could hear it all the way from the state of Maine down to Key West. The Beatles, unknown band in Europe. Why did the Beatles become what the Beatles became? Marketing genius, Brian Epstein. Right. Brian Epstein heard about KB Radio. If you had a song played on KB Radio, everybody on the East Coast would know about exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. So, so he got a hold of KB. Yep. And said, hey, we're going to be doing the Ed Sullivan show. Yep. How would you like to have a Buffalo concert the day after the uh, Ed Sullivan show? Well, nobody knew the Beatles yet. This is pre Beatlemania. Danny Everett and Joey Reynolds turned it down. Oh my we gosh! Had the very first Beatles concert right. ever been in Buffalo. The day after the I, Ed Sullivan I, that's, show. That's in here. I think I remember, re I remember reading okay. that but in here. Yeah. How much did the Beatles want? Probably not very much back 3, then. $3,500. Yeah, not very much. Now, remember Danny Everett always used to say, you know, was it, he used to advertise him, Danny moves his family in the morning? Right. That, Danny, was, his, that was his tagline. I tag asked line. Danny about the Beatles thing to make sure it was true. Mm -hmm. You know, because I heard it was and I heard it wasn't and everything. He said, yep, Rick is true. Wow. And he says, that's why I moved my family in the morning. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, I'm still kicking myself in the ass. Kicking myself not in the butt, right. <laughs> Hi-Fi Hits Records sells new and used vinyl, CDs, T-shirts, posters, and other collectibles. Stop, shop, and relax at our in-store bar. We're open seven days a week and 24-7 at hi-fihits.com. Hi-Fi Hits Records and more, 5221 Main Street in Williamsville. Hi, this is Kevin Joseph from Talos. And I'm Mark Miller from Talos. And we want to congratulate Robert Edwards for bringing his new music program to WBBZ TV. Congratulations, Robert. We will see you soon. Cheers. All right, we're at Hi Fi Hits. Checking out the line for Record Store Day. We got these gentlemen here, our first in line. Ooh, what time did you guys get here? 11.30. Last night? Yes. You slept out? Uh, no, no sleeping. <laughs> no sleeping, no sleeping. No. What are you guys here to get today? Uh, Eric Hart. That's what I'm hearing a lot of that, yeah, that Rockology, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Is that what you guys are all looking to get, same thing? Just looking. Just looking and seeing what they got? Any particular Van Halen or just whatever? Yeah, the set they have out, the uh, live, what is it, the right live? Here right, now. Right, right here right now. Right here right now? Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice choice.
Right, all right. Record Store Day 2023 wine is coming into high five hits right now. Yo, the owner has the door open for everyone coming in to get their album. Record Store Day 2023. Vinyl is still alive. With all the new vinyl coming out, it's even more collectible nowadays. Rock, we're opening the doors to your future. Your future is waiting here at School of Rock.